Today we're going to talk about the CSS box model and it is imperative that you fully understand how to use the box model in CSS in order to apply any style to your to your page. So here is an image of the box model and this is taken from the uh, Mozilla Developer Network uh, page which is really good but um, it can be kind of intense if you're just starting out. So I just wanted to show you and go over this again. Um, so every element in an HTML document is structured as a rectangular box inside the document. Okay, and this is what I, I really want you to understand is that everything from a, an H1 tag to a paragraph tag to a list item, everything is shown as a box. So because everything is a box, we can apply different properties to that box. Okay, so if you take a look in here, this is the inner box, this is the content. So if if this was a heading, this would be the the text of the heading. And then directly on the outside of the content is the padding. So by default, every web browser has an, a user agent style and that is basically telling us that the browser has specific default CSS that is being applied. One of those rules is that a head, an H1 has a little bit of margin on top of it and this can be frustrating because sometimes you're like I didn't put any margin on my my H1 tag. Why is it there? It's because it's coming from the browser, and we'll we'll uh, do a demonstration on that. So within the padding, after that is the border. Now, obviously, not everything has a border on it, but it could. So you could put a border around here, and then after the border comes the margin. So we're going to play around with creating some boxes today in brackets and getting a feeling for the box model. Okay, so I'm going to go to my desktop and open up brackets and I'm going to, this was my example web page I've done for a different video where we kind of talked a little bit about the box model. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. So I'm going to go up to file, new, and I'm going to create my HTML structure. So you can do the same thing with me. By now you should have this pretty well memorized. And I usually just like to put these blank tags in here <clears throat> so I can get things started. Okay, so I'm going to use some embedded um, style sheet here, which means that in my head section I'm going to use the style tag. Okay, so this is my basic structure and then I'm going to save it in my page here and I'm going to just call this box model. Now remember with file names you want them all to be lowercase, no spaces, so that when we eventually upload these to the web we won't have to make any file, cha file name changes and you want it to be save as type all files. So boxmodel.html, <clears throat> that's what I'm going to save it as. Okay, now that we've saved it as HTML, you'll see down here in the bottom right corner of brackets, it now says HTML and my the color code is going gonna, is gonna to start happening. One thing that's really cool in brackets is if you touch a tag, it will highlight its associated closing tag. So I really like that and once you get um, a bunch of lines of codes in here, it can be helpful. Okay, so let's say, let's use some semantic divs, shall we? So let's go ahead and put in, oops, I always want your HTML to be lowercase. Let's go ahead and put in a header and a main. Main is actually a new semantic HTML element and footer. Okay, so we're going to have these three boxes that we're going to create. Now, Again, these are semantic divs, so what a div is and what a semantic div is, is it acts just as a box, as a holder for any in, any content that you have sitting inside here. So I can have an H1 in here, I can have an image in here, um, whatever I want to put in here, it'll just be 
within my box and it's a little easier for us to kind of place and group these these separate pieces of content into boxes because then we can kind of use the box model a little bit easier to uh, to represent these things okay so let's say in the main I'm gonna have an h2 and I'm gonna say margins and I'm gonna have some sample text in here and then I'm gonna have another h2 for border and some sample text in here as well and another h2 for the last element which is padding and some sample text in here okay and then for my footer I'm gonna put um, a paragraph in here and I'm gonna use that special symbol for copyright which is an ampersand and the word copy with a semicolon I'm gonna put 2018 so this is what I have so far and let me go out and get some sample text uh, let's do hipster ipsum this time okay so this is my my sample text that I'm just putting in for demonstration purposes if you are making a website in this class don't just use sample text you definitely want to to spend time on the content. Okay. So here we go. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to click my lightning bolt to do a live preview. And this is what we have so far. Remember, there's no style. So very boring, right? No style, just black and white. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start working with our box model. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to work with this H1. Okay, so when you define some, something in CSS, you want to make sure that you are attaching it to the proper thing. So I can specify that my box that I want to work with is header. And again, I think the easiest way to understand CSS is to, is to start working with it by using the HTML element, the name for header. So if there happened to be, there should never be more than one header, but in the event that, the, that there was, this CSS rule would apply to every single spot that said header. Okay, so let's say the first thing we wanna do for this is if I want my header to be completely flush against the sides of the browser. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to do zero, margin zero, okay, and, and then I'm going to do, I want to put a border, and I can do a shortcut for the border, okay, remember we talked about the clock model, so at the very top of your box, this is the first position, the 12, okay, so this is margin top, and then uh, three o'clock on the clock would be margin right, and then six o'clock would be margin bottom, and nine o'clock would be margin left. So same thing with border. Border works that way, as does the padding. So I'm gonna say that, um, well for border, I'm just gonna put two pixels solid black, okay? And then padding is where I'll do something using my clock model. So let's say I want to have, um, I'm going to use percentage for my padding here. So let's say I want a 5% top and a 10% right and 10% bottom and 5% left. Oops. Okay, and let's put a background color in here because I want you to be able to see this. So I've got let's say navy and then because I have a dark color I want to specify the color of my text okay so let's see what this looks like now because again this is going to be applied to the header so it's going to uh, to impact the h1 in it so the h1 instead of being the default black text it's going to be a white text so let's see what it looks like okay so here we go we have our box model and you see here 
that it doesn't quite look flush to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm using the Chrome browser, right, because we have to use Chrome. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose the word inspect. Okay, and this has, has been brought up in class, but the inspect tool allows you to really look at your box model. Um, so take a look at a few things here. Number one is this little line you can move. So if I move it, my CSS, this is my styles box, and this is my HTML box. And you'll see that the HTML is collapsed. Okay, everything that's kind of coming over, here's my header. So if I click on header, it will tell me what I have set for all of these different elements. And then I can kind of see exactly what's going on here. I can see that I have a margin, a border, a padding, and as I hover over these different elements, you see how it highlights things. So I can always, I can, I can visually see what I want to do, and I can even, if I hover over one of these settings in the in the, the CSS, I can uncheck something, and see if I remove that what the difference would be. So this one that I'm removing is just the padding, and you'll see the difference with padding, without padding. Now. What we're looking at here is just a read only. So it's not like we're going to be making changes to our CSS through here. This is literally just to kind of take a look and go, hmm, what's being applied here? And again, if I click on anything in here, like let's say I want to click on, see what's going on with the H2. Again, I can click inspect and you see the box right around it. So as I hover over these different HTML tags, you'll see what's happening is you're seeing the box. Okay, so see this H2? I don't have anything set for the H2 for padding, but you're seeing something that says user agent style sheet. So all of these things are being applied from the browser. So if you want to make any changes, you don't want that H2 to have such big padding, you need to specify a rule for the padding that will override what the browser is automatically doing. Okay, so here we have the the um, header. Let's take a look at this one more time. And here's my H1, and you'll see that I have, again, I haven't applied anything to it, but it automatically has some padding built in here. And then here is body. Okay, so here's the perfect example. Remember, for, so for the header, I said I wanted the margins to be zero, but the header is nested inside the body. And so here is the user agent style sheet that's applying an eight pixel margin to this whole, this whole page. Now, I don't want that to be there. So I went into the inspect so I could kind of see where is this coming from, okay? so. There's a way, to, a way to override this. So I can do a couple things. Number one, I can specify that my body has a margin of zero. Okay, and let's see what happens. I'm gonna save it. And you can automatically, you can see that now my heading, my header is flush with the edge of the browser, which is what I wanted. But also, because I did that, now all of these things are also flush. So this is where I need to get my box model working so that I can get these sections to look good too. So how would I do that? If I want to apply a margin to the main section, I can write a rule for main. And you'll notice that I'm kind of putting my style uh, declarations in order of how they're being shown on the page and that is for organization purposes so just in case you had a question about that okay so for my main maybe I want the margin okay so what do I want for the top margin I don't want any for the top margin right and left I'm gonna say 10% so and same thing I don't want anything for the bottom so I'm just gonna leave it at 0 and 10% and that means top and bottom zero, right and left 10%. So let's see what that does to my box. Okay, so so here we go. Now, I think my, my heading, my header box is just way too gigantic, but I like what's going on here in my margins. Now, I, 
I don't like that my heading starts way over here. So either I want my heading to be coming in at 10% or I want it centered. Okay, and then I definitely still need to do some work here with my footer. So let's just go ahead and um, do the same thing with footer. I'm just going to do a text align center just to kind of take that off of my plate right now. And I'm going to change my padding. I'm just going to put this padding at 5%, which is going to apply to all all aspects of the padding. And I want to do a text align center on that as well. All right, so let's see what that looks like. All right, so looks a little better. I hate the font, but looks a little better. Um, again, if I click on these things, even in um, the brackets, preview it will kind of show you the boxes so when you click on things and you see this like blue shadow you're like what the heck where is that coming from this is where it's coming from right so now I've got my box for main and I can style it however I want let's let's uh let's just put a color in here so we can see exactly where it is and I'm just going to use silver okay so here is my box model. so there is this is being applied to the content okay so you might say well what the heck why is this why is this is this not going all the way to the screen because we have a margin in here so in order for us not to have this be completely to the edge of, of the box what do we need to use okay we need to put in padding right so let's put in some padding and say padding and I'll just put 5% all the way around that and let's see how far that brings this in okay so so now you can see the difference I have a box around my main and this is the main box I've taken away all the margin so it sits nicely underneath this this color and if I wanted to continue to work with my boxes inside of main, I can keep adding box model rules to everything that I have here. Okay, so let's say um, now I want to put something like my paragraphs. Well, let's see. Let's say I want to have a H2 rule. Now, let's take a look at how something like this might work. So first I'm going to change the font family to uh, Verdana and I'm going to change the color to white. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it looks a little bit better. I think I'm going to do the same thing to my header. Now again, I can apply, I can apply the font to the actual box or it might be more logical to apply it to the H1. So look at what I'm doing here. If I put something that specifies two elements, so you see I've got header space H1, I am basically telling it to be more specific. Okay, and I'll show you how this works. So this rule is only going to apply to h1 tags that are sitting inside the header if i have another h1 tag out here i can say uh, color equals red okay so let's see let's see what's going to happen here all right so the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to come to this header h1 rule that says hey we need this to be verdana okay so it's changing it to verdana then it's saying, okay, all the H1s on the page need to be red. So it's putting red in here. And the only reason it's becoming red is because I haven't specified a color here. So if I put a specify the color yellow, is it going to be red or is it going to be yellow? Let's find out. Why is it yellow and not red? The reason is because we are specifying it in in this rule that is very specific okay and this rule is saying that the header h1 
color should be yellow, whereas this rule isn't as specific. So it's saying all H1s should be red. Okay, so if you want to, some people will ask, how do I, you know, I've applied a rule for H1, but the H1 is showing and applying to um, everything on my page. So let me put this H1 in main, and what color is this going to be? Is it going to be yellow? Is it going to be Verdana? Is it going to be red? Okay, so look at the difference here. This H1 is under main H1. So the only rule, it's going to skip this one because it's not in the header section, it's in the main section. It's going to move right to this H1 that says the color should be red. Okay, so this is the cascading nature and the specific nature of CSS. That's why it can be very powerful. Okay, um, one other thing that we want to talk about is let's say we want to put a border around um, this paragraph. So let's come up here and create a style and I'm gonna if I'm creating a style for a particular paragraph I'm gonna want to be as specific as I can. So I'm gonna say main P. Main P is gonna apply to any paragraphs so one two three within the main section but it is not going to apply to the footer P. Okay, so main P, I'm going to do a font family and I'm going to change that to Verdana Sans Serif. And I'm going to do a font size of 1.2M. And let's say I want to put a border, a one pixel dashed and black. Okay, so with your borders, you can specify different types of borders. So you'll see right here, now as soon as I put a border around, it makes it look like my content is all pushed up against that border. I don't like that so much. So I need to also specify that I want to have some padding in here. So I'm going to do a padding all around of just, um, let's just say I want it to say five pixels. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so that yeah, that looks a little bit okay. Maybe I want to brush it up to two, I mean to ten. I like that a little bit better. All right, so let's say I don't want that border applying to every single P in my main section. How do I get it so that it only applies to one thing? and not everything. So maybe I just want it to apply to this one in the middle. Okay, so how do I make a rule that isn't going to impact everything? So as I've mentioned, the easiest way to start with CSS is to use your HTML elements and then to put them more specific if need be. Okay, so, so far we've gotten away pretty well, but once you want to do something that is completely breaking the rules, you're going to need to use either a class or an ID. Okay, the, the most popular one is to use an ID, and the way we do that is we put an attribute within our HTML tag. So I'm going to say ID equals special. Okay, so this is like my little, my little special thing. Okay, so as soon as I have this ID equals special, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to put special in my CSS. Now, I have this little trick for remembering the difference between IDs and class. So ID, you just name it here. You don't put any special characters in here, but in your CSS code, you have to match an ID with the pound sign. Okay, if you wanted to do a class, a class is something that you would do, maybe you could use multiple times on a page. So if you wanted to have like the first, um, the first letter of your paragraph be capitalized or something like that, or a particular paragraphs capitalized, you can make a class called, you know, capitalized and classes would be exactly the same thing. You do p class equals 
um, capital Y's, and then, but you would, instead of looking for a pound sign, you would look for a period. So this is the way I remember it. So I remember it as ID number, ID number, and class period. Okay, so ID number, class period. It works, it works for me. <clears throat> so hopefully you can remember that too. Okay, so if I define this special, I <clears throat> am basically saying you need to apply these rules to this particular item. And let's say I want this to have my border. So I want that to have my border. But the other ones I don't want to have to have a border. So let's see what the difference is here. So here you go. So now I've got three paragraphs, but only one of them I want to have as kind of a special a special thing here. And maybe maybe with special I'll put in a different a background color um, of purple and a font color white because anything that's dark needs to have a lighter color. Let's see what that looks like. Now you can't really see my border too well. Let me um, let me change my border to white. Oops. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. All right, so so here we go. So it looks definitely looks a little, little bit different. It's it's kind of highlighted out, um, and this can this can make it so that we can totally do this to every single one. So if I wanted to do this one, maybe I want this one to be called third. Okay, so ID equals third, ID number third, and I can make this one be something completely different. Green. Of course, I'm, I'm really just being silly with all these different things. Um, font. Font style italic. This is not going to necessarily be very readable, but <clears throat> so here is another box. Maybe I want the padding to be a little bit bigger here. So maybe I want the padding to be um, an extra 5% or 5 pixels. Oh, actually that isn't going to do anything because the other one is 5. Let's see what that looks like. You can barely tell it. Maybe, let me make that a little bit bigger. All right, so you can see, you can definitely see the difference here, right? And and then if I wanted this one to be something different, so I can come up here and say ID equals first, and let's just keep this all in order and change special to second. And then let's put a first in here. I have no idea what I want this one to look like, but uh, let's do background color white font. I think the font color is already black. Uh, let's do font family Arial. And let's just keep it at that. And let's take a look at the difference. All right, so see, we've got one, two, three. We've got three different boxes in here and three different styles that have applied. We talked about using, um, being specific with our CSS selectors and using IDs. So IDs are to be used for things that are only going to be on your page one time. So for a sp special section, you can include the ID, but you don't wanna have multiple, multiple IDs using the same word. If you need to do that, then those become classes. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful. And again, with CSS, a lot of it is just kind of trying to see if something works. Does that work? Does it not work? And hopefully, uh, as you go further into it, you get more comfortable. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to use that inspect tool. Um, I just wanted to show it to you today. And you'll 
be able to use that to kind of, you know, take a look and see where things might have gone wrong, like I did. Okay, all right, thanks a lot. Bye.